My name is Clement Saggers, and I am an autistic person. I cannot stand my life in this modern world. I know there are people worse off than me, but personally, I find my life absolutely unbearable. In this modern world that I live in, everything seems to be geared against me, especially in these modern times. I mean, 2020 has been one of the worst, if not the worst year in human history, and I just don't see any signs of improvement. I've lost all hope of this world ever getting better. I've lost all hope of this world ever returning to how it used to be. I've lost my faith in humanity, and I think I personally am losing my mind. It's not easy living in a world that I absolutely despise, and that's why I find my life unbearable. It sure would be wonderful to live in a world where summer never ends, where no neighbour blasts their music at earthquake levels, where no noisy DIY is allowed, where you can be young forever, have young friends, live in peace and quiet, with no crime, and where things are like the way they used to be. Now that is a world I want to live in. I often dream of a perfect world, so most of the ideas for my perfect world are actually inspired by things I've seen in my dreams. Also, in my perfect world, none of the problems of this world exist. It is a utopia, a paradise. I could even call it heaven, because, well, it is heaven for me, and I call this place Clemtopia, and it's the world the way the world should be. I want to escape from this terrible world that I live in. I want to escape to Clemtopia and never come back. I want to live there so badly you cannot even begin to imagine. So let's see what my perfect world is like. It is a nice world. It is a peaceful world. The weather is always warm. Nobody grows old. And everybody's taste in music, TV shows, video games and films are more similar to mine. It is a safe world. You don't need to lock your door when you go out. You can walk down a dark alleyway without fear of being mugged. And kids can play outside and in the playgrounds without their parents needing to be there. It also has its own government. And it's not like the typical tyrannical power mad governments that we have now. No. It is a good government. It is a government that knows what it's doing. It is a government that's there to help you and keep things peaceful and good not to take away your freedom and make you their slave. So, the weather in Clemtopia, I could sum up in one word. Perfect. The daytime temperatures all year round are an average 25 Celsius. Nighttime temperatures, yeah, 17, 18, something like that. And all year round, they pretty much stay where they are, never going more than a couple of degrees above or below that. So in my perfect world, it never gets too hot. And it certainly never gets too cold. You can shed those winter clothes because there's no need for a jacket or a sweater here. You can go out any time of year in shorts and t-shirt and not be cold. There is not even any need for heating in Clemtopian houses. There is still hot water available, but you're never going to need to have the heating on. Another good thing is that the sunrise and sunset times barely change throughout the year. And the trees are all evergreen, so they never lose their leaves. And almost every evening, you can watch a beautiful golden sunset. I say almost every evening because the only time you're going to see rain in my perfect world is during the evening or at night. And that's only if rain is needed. You'll almost never see it rain during the day. Also, each time it rains, there's a 10% chance of it being a storm. And one thing I would do if Clemtopia was real is that on stormy evenings... I would sit out on the terrace of my perfect Clemtopian house, watching the storm. And on a side note, there are no diseases or viruses of any kind, including that silly joke of a virus from China, all the changes everybody just seems to be accepting without question, all the rules they seem to be embracing. It's not normal for people to act this way and just accept it. The world's gone crazy! I seriously feel as if I've fallen through a rift in the space-time continuum and landed in a world where everything sucks. But yeah, anyway, getting back to what I was saying, there's none of that in my perfect world. Nobody gets sick 
or dies from viruses and infections and diseases and germs. There's none of that there, which again is another way my perfect world is perfect. Another thing I should point out in my perfect world is that there is no monetary system. We have developed beyond the concept of money and we know the trouble that money can bring. They say money is the root of all evil, right? So everything in my perfect world is free and all work is voluntary. People do things for other people as well as themselves. In fact, with everything being free there, you can walk into a shop, take whatever you want and walk out again. You don't have to pay for anything. Most of the work in my perfect world is done by robots anyway. Robots that look human but are programmed to enjoy doing their work and expect nothing in return. In fact, the next time you walk into a shop or something and ask for help, you might very well be talking to a robot without even knowing it. Some people might think this is a very lazy way of living, but you can work if you want to. Clemtopia does, however, have a very strict policy on noise pollution. For starters, you must not play your music at a level that makes your neighbours uncomfortable. The first few times you'll just be let off with a warning as you may not know how loud they can hear it. But if you continue to play it loud, then there will be trouble. So, after those first few warnings, and you still decide to be a selfish tosser and play your music too loud, the first time after those first few warnings, you'll have your stereo taken away for a month and then it will be returned to you. The second time you play it too loud, you'll have it taken away even longer. And after the third time you've had it taken away and returned to you, if you still play your music too loud, you'll have your stereo taken away again, and then it will be destroyed and then returned to you, hopefully driving home the message that selfish noise making in Clemtopia is simply not allowed. The same goes for noisy DIY. If you're the kind of selfish swine who loves making a lot of noise with tools and whatnot, without asking the neighbours first whether they would be alright with a little bit of noise, or even ignoring what they say, even if so much as one neighbour says no, then that's also not allowed. You cannot do any kind of noisy DIY without asking the neighbour's permission first, and if so much as one neighbour says no, then it's illegal to do so. Performing such a selfish act of noise making without asking the neighbours, or ignoring that one neighbour that said no, is a call for the noise police, who will come and take your tools away. Also, I could say the same for people who let their dogs bark all the time, although they won't be taken away or destroyed. They'll just have to go to obedience school. So for people like me, who just cannot stand noise, noise is not a problem in my perfect world. We don't allow low-life scumbags, thieves and vandals into my perfect world, and we especially do not allow noisy people in. This is why there's no crime or noise. Only nice, good, kind and considerate people get in. So in my perfect world, you can rest assured that even if you live in an apartment in the city area, you will never be bothered by your neighbour's noise. You can sleep soundly, knowing that you won't be woken up by loud party music or deal with any kind of noise at any time of night or day. People in my perfect world respect other people's rights to peace and quiet, which is more than I can say for where I live right now. In my perfect world, Age does not matter, because you can actually choose what age you want to be. Even if you're an old person who's practically knocking on death's door, you can still become a child again, or whatever age you want to be. So, you choose what age you want to be, then you step into this device, and when you step out again, you'll start aging forwards or backwards until you reach the age you want to be. Now, it's not quite as fast as what's illustrated in the picture here. Aging forwards is the same speed that you would normally age forwards, and aging backwards is the same speed, but obviously backwards. Either way, though, 
when you reach your target age, you don't age any further, forwards or backwards. You stay that same age forever. You could be a hundred million years old and not look a day over 25. Of course, you have to think carefully about it before you make a decision. And I myself have thought long and hard about this and I've decided that I really want to be 12 years old again because 12 years old is the peak of childhood and that's the age that I feel inside. School in my perfect world is also very different. Instead of starting at some ungodly hour in the morning, it starts later but still ends around the same time that school normally ends. Also, teachers actually teach you things instead of just giving you a workbook and expecting you to know the answers. The teachers there also try to make school interesting and fun instead of boring. Plus, once you've learned the basics, you only need to attend the classes that interest you. You do not have to go to any class if you don't find it interesting. And most importantly, no homework. Now, if you visited my perfect world, it would almost be like stepping back in time because Clemtopia is retro themed. And even if the whole world can't be perfect, well, maybe one little island can as I've drawn here. So, on Clemtopia Island, there is an 80s themed city and four towns. One town being 80s themed, one town being 70s themed, one town being 60s themed, and one town being 50s themed, because, in my opinion, those four decades are the greatest decades ever, even if I wasn't alive in most of them. Now, in my perfect world, there is no need to grumble on about how great the past was, because in Clemtopia, it is the past. Well, what the past would have been like if high definition, high speed broadband, modern high end computer parts and YouTube were around back then. For the most part, everything is like it was in the past, and you won't find any smart devices, including smartphones, but we're getting to that. Cars look like they used to, you know, you can actually tell one car from another. Stereo systems look like they did in the past, with brushed steel, knobs, buttons and dials, speakers that cover the entire frequency range without the need of a subwoofer, and, oh yeah, they take physical media. It's none of that DAB or Bluetooth rubbish. It's all analog, except for the optional CD player. Speaking of hi-fi, in my perfect world, people listen to music that actually sounds like music. You know, instead of the you know, EDM and the you know, mumble rap songs that sound like they have really, really nasally voices like this and all the other crap music that's out today yeah, they don't listen to that garbage they listen to music that sounds like good music. You know, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, even a little bit of the 90s. That's where the good music is, and all new music in My Perfect World is done in those styles. So the radio stations in My Perfect World, not only do they just broadcast the good stuff, you know, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, a little bit of the 90s, the shows are actually hosted by live DJs. It's not just a computer playing a playlist. We have actual live DJs bringing personality and life to the shows. You know, just like radio used to be. I've got a classic example of that. I found this old reel-to-reel -reel tape that someone had recorded back in the 1960s. I'll put a link to it. It's well worth a listen. It's like a time capsule. So not only does it have the most popular songs of the time, it's got catchy jingles, comedy skits, even the ads are worth listening to. That's how radio should be. I mean, that's how it was. So you've got your 50 stations, your 60 stations, your 70 stations, your 80 stations, even a handful of 90 stations, and even stations that play new music that sounds like how music used to sound back in the 50s to the 80s. For instance, there's a station in the city area where at night when the city's all lit up with neon lights and everything, it plays synthwave and that kind of music all night long. And I'm one of the people who tunes in. Now, going from radio to TV, the TV sets in my perfect world actually look like TV sets. They look the way TV sets used to. 
And even the really, really old style ones with their rotary controls for adjusting the volume and selecting the channel and whatnot, even those have remote controls and even though they use cathode ray tubes, they are high definition cathode ray tubes. And instead of magnetic beam deflection, they use electrostatic beam deflection so they don't emit a high pitched whine. You can get them in 4x3 or 16x9 depending on your preference. Yep. Even the 1950s style TVs can come in 16x9 if you want, and all TVs there can receive the digital high definition broadcasts as well as the analog standard definition broadcasts without the need of any set top box. It's all built in. So, as for the shows that you get there, well, it's pretty much everything from the 50s to the 90s, because that's when TV was good. There's a TV channel that does 50 stuff, a TV channel that does 60 stuff, and so on. And every new show is done in those old styles. And by old styles, I mean 50s to 90s. Also, staying on the subject of TV stations, all the TV stations are required to not only broadcast in digital high definition, but also analog standard definition too. Yep, in Clemtopia, analog TV never went off the air. So if you're in an area where your digital reception isn't so good, you still have the analog transmission to fall back on. And they also have inputs for digital and analog, because in my perfect world, VHS, Betamax, and even Laserdisc are popular. Blu-ray and DVD are there as well, but people there like to record TV shows onto tape just like they did in the old days. Another thing I'd like to mention is those old text-based menus that things like TVs, VCRs, and cameras and whatnot used to have. So, I'm filming myself right now on an old camera, and let me just bring up the menu here, if I can find the button, they're right on the back here, so it's kind of difficult to get to. So yeah, so let's say I want to set the white balance, well that's pretty easy, so I'm going to get something white here, this scrap of paper, and I'm just going to stick this right in front of the camera, and look at that. It's done. We can close the menu. We can close the menu. And there we go. Functional and no mess. These should never have gone out of style. And in Clemtopia, they certainly didn't. Now in Clemtopia, just like TV shows, films are also good. There's none of the brain dead stuff or violent stuff. Remember all that family friendly stuff that came out in the 90s? totally awesome movies that came out in the 80s, and films made even earlier than that? Well, new films in Clemtopia would also be in those styles. Not to mention that there is nothing above a PG-13 rating. You won't find any M-rated stuff, any 15-rated stuff, any 18-rated stuff. Nope, just PG or PG-13 at the most. Clemtopians do not like violent things and they especially don't like profanity. So you won't find any of the horrible films of this world, only the nice ones. Another way my perfect world is like the past is because people there are like how people used to be. They're considerate towards one another, they're kind, and they do not use profanity. In fact, people there get offended when they hear that kind of language, just like I do. Although in this world, it's a completely different story. I was watching a YouTube video the other day, and started out alright, but then they started swearing out the blue, so I left a comment saying they shouldn't swear, and the person who made the video came back, posting a comment, and what he was saying, he seemed completely butthurt by the fact that I said that swearing is bad. He seemed to get as offended by what I said as I get when I hear people using that kind of language. So, what does my perfect world look like? Well, at the edge, there is a beautiful beach with palm trees and white sand. Even though I don't really care much for beach stuff, it's there for people who do. And in the corner of the beach, there is a building on tall metal legs with an elevator going right up to it. And at the top of this building, there are futuristic pods going in and out, and these carry people around. And this is something I saw in a dream and I thought it looked pretty cool, so I decided I'd add it here. Behind the beach, there is a city area. Now, picture Miami in the 1980s, but without all the crime, and that's pretty much what it looks like. 
further in are the towns. Like I said, there's the 80s themed town, there's the 70s themed town, the 60s themed town, and the 50s themed town. And curiously enough, the 80s town looks pretty much like where I live now, except it's nice and quiet. In fact, all the other towns and the city are nice and quiet because the noise law applies, keeping it nice and quiet. So, further in is the rural area, and this is like where the farms and everything is, and this is also where my house is. We don't actually use our land as a farm, it's just that that's just where I want my perfect house to be. So it's out the way of all the noise of the neighbours, not that there really is any, but this house is something I saw in a dream one time. It has a shed to one side of it with everything I've ever wanted in it, and on the other side there is a barn that I've turned into my own personal man cave, or, well, should I say boy cave, because in my perfect world I'm a kid again. We'll get to that in just a minute. The house is in the shade of a few trees to keep the sun away from it, you know, keep it in the shade. And inside the house it's pretty much what you'd expect to find, except the dining room is sort of halfway between floors, because again, that's how I saw it in a dream and I thought that looked pretty cool, so I thought I'd add it there. And my bedroom is in the attic, and it's like a kid's bedroom, it's got bunk beds and, uh, well, kind of looks like this, and it's even got a slide going from the bedroom to the first landing, because, again, that's something I saw in a dream and I thought I'd put it in. So anyway, going back to the barn. So, turn this into my own little place. It's got thin purple drapes letting in a hazy purple light, and inside it's got sort of like 80s neon style. I've got a science bench on one side with all my electronic stuff, and on the back there's a big projector screen and the projector itself is connected up to my supercomputer where I can play all the latest games at the highest settings, watch films and videos in high definition, YouTube and everything. Got a couch there where me and my friends can sit where we play video games and watch films and things. The place has also got its own mini bar with milkshake dispenser, it can do vanilla, it can do banana, it can do strawberry, it can do chocolate. And also, I've got this, like, circular tent thing, and inside this tent, it's got a cloud-shaped bed, well, cloud-shaped hammock, really, and a hologram of space all around the tent walls. So, when you step in there, it's like you're actually in space, it actually looks like you're in space, and again, this is another thing I saw in a dream, so I thought I'd add it. And that's basically my perfect house. And of course, on those stormy evenings, like I said, I can sit out on the terrace of the house and watch the storm, and that would be pretty much perfect. That's pretty much my perfect house in my perfect world. So finally, we get to the jungle. Yep, my perfect world has one of those. And this is where I go when I want to be alone. And even though this jungle has the ferocious animals that you'd expect to find in the jungle, they wouldn't even think of hurting you. Instead, they're friendly, so they're not dangerous. I know that's in the Bible somewhere, I think it's somewhere in Revelation, and I always thought that sounded nice, so yeah, why not? Of course, my perfect world is no stranger to mysteries. Like, for instance, near the jungle there's the mysterious frozen lake, and how this lake stays cold and frozen when the ambient temperature is around 25 Celsius? It's a mystery. Now, one thing you won't find in my perfect world are smartphones, or any smartphone services. I hate smartphones, okay? They sap the life out of people, and then turn them into tech-obsessed zombies who do nothing but use their phone. Plus, the smartphone has replaced all the technology that I grew up with. I don't remember doing things like web surfing, playing video games, watching TV, and taking photos and videos on a damn phone. So that's why they're not a thing in my perfect world. And even if you did take your smartphone into my perfect world, well, without any smartphone services, it's not going to be much use to you, so might just as well ditch the thing. If you do need to make a call while you're out and about, you can use a public call box, just like we used to do. Remember these? Plus, as there's no crime in my perfect world, you won't find these things vandalized or used as toilets. Now, computers in my perfect world 
have retained the looks that computers had back in the 80s and the 90s, so it's not uncommon to find a computer that looks like, say, a IBM 5150, but with modern high-end parts in it, with which you can play the latest games with all the settings maxed out. Of course, classic computers with the kind of stuff that you would expect to find in classic computers also exist there, because in my perfect world, retro gaming and retro computing is a pretty big thing too. And speaking of games, there are no M-rated games there. It's all like family-friendly stuff, you know, like Mario and Sonic and stuff like that. And there are no games there that have mandatory paid DLC or microtransactions. You do not need to connect your console or your computer to the internet in order to play your game. And speaking of software, all the software in my perfect world is free. Now, it seems today that people who make free software have completely forgotten what the word free is supposed to mean. So they make some software, put it up on the internet, with a big bold text saying it's free and big download button. So you download your software, install it, and when you go to use it, although it claims to be free, it wants to be activated or wants your credit card details. Now that does not say free to me. And in my perfect world, you won't find software like that. When you download free software, you get free software. Not a time limited trial, not a demo, not a crippled version of a full product, no hidden charges, no features locked behind a paywall, just 100% free software. And the free software in my perfect world has just about as many features as you would find on something from, say, Microsoft or Adobe. Another thing about the software in my perfect world is that the installers for the software are all offline. So you don't need to be online in order to install your software. And this also means that when you've downloaded your software, you can actually save it onto a USB or a CD or whatever, so you have a backup copy of it. So let's say you need to reinstall your OS and then you need to reinstall all your software and you go online to find the software you want and it's not there anymore. Well, if you were smart and saved a backup copy of that offline installer while you still could, like I always do, well, problem solved. You can still install it from there. Of course, in the real world, Trying to actually find an offline installer for things is like looking for a fart in a bubble bath, but they're out there. And also, software in my perfect world doesn't come with any bundleware. I don't know why they do this. They put extra crap in that you don't want. You've got to decline from this, decline from that, decline from something else. And if you're not careful, you'll get a whole ton of crap installed that you didn't want in the first place. Now, in my perfect world, that doesn't happen. There is no bundleware. The installers just install the software you wanted and nothing else, just like they used to. So the internet in my perfect world is a lot like how the internet used to be in the way that there are no ads, there's no annoying pop-ups that darken the screen and take up like three quarters of it and no way to close them, there's no viruses, well actually there have always been viruses but there's none in my perfect world. There's no fake download buttons that download something different to what you actually wanted to download. There's none of those stupid capture things. And there's no websites out there that claim to be free, but then want your credit card details. Now I'm calling you out, user next. Is the internet like the internet used to be, but still has YouTube? Oh, I should also point out that just like the old internet, profanity is not tolerated either. Now, My Perfect World also has its own operating system, which I have simply called Clem OS. It is fast and responsive. It has a nice, well-organized and clean start menu. It boots up in seconds rather than minutes. And it is free. It will never ask you for a product key. It doesn't need to be activated. And it is free from all the bloatware and other BS. It does not spy on you or collect personal data and does not slow down over time or fill up with junk like other operating systems do, which I won't actually name here. Microsoft. Windows. 
Plus, it can run just about all known Windows software, which includes games, often better than Windows itself can, and can even run the old DOS stuff, as well as its own software. So to prove that, here we are in Clem OS, and I'm going to run Steam here. This is the Windows version of Steam. Now I'm going to run a game. Let's run, I don't know, Team Sonic Racing. Takes a minute or so because I don't have a solid state hard drive. And here we are, playing Team Sonic Racing in Clem OS with all the settings maxed out, maintaining a solid 60 frames a second. Now let's try a DOS game. I don't know, how about Commander Keen? Because I'm pretty keen on that series. And there we go, a 16-bit DOS game running on Clem OS. <laughs> Tired of the same desktop theme? Well, we can change that. How about this? Or maybe this? Or maybe even this? Now I know what you're thinking. This is probably some custom flavour of Linux, right? Nope. Clem OS is its own thing. Now wouldn't you like an operating system like this? This is what an operating system is supposed to be like. But of course, we live in a little something called reality and cannot have nice things. Yep, it sure would be nice to live in that world, because it's so much like how the world used to be. The world I live in now, it's just not the world I grew up in. Everything has changed. Nothing's like it used to be. I really feel like I'm living in the wrong world. I feel, right, like I was plucked from the world that I once knew, and dumped into a world where everything is uncomfortably different and weird. I mean, how would you like it if you were taken from your home, and put somewhere that's so uncomfortable and weird and strange to you that you just cannot settle there. Yeah, that's how I feel in this modern world. It's just not the world that I once knew. It's like I'm in some completely different world. I'm way out of my comfort zone in this modern world. Everything has changed for the worse and just keeps getting worse. Everything in this modern world is just geared towards these stupid modern phone-obsessed people and not geared towards people like me, who just want to live in the past where everything was better. All these stupid modern people think having a low IQ is normal. They like all the violence. They like living with scumbags or being scumbags themselves. They like only the modern brain-dead TV shows. They like only the violent video games like Call of Duty or Grand Theft Auto. The only music they listen to is that modern mass-produced electronic garbage and play it really loud without any consideration for other people. I'm sure some of them even like having noisy neighbours. I'm so paranoid about noisy neighbours that when I look out of my window at night and see people have still got their lights on, I worry that they're going to have an all-night party. They only like modern junk, and they bury themselves in their smartphones and their social media. And as for British people, well, pretty much the same thing goes, but... They prefer cold, wet British weather instead of nice weather, and they think England is better than America. They're crazy to think that. Speaking of England, just about all the English-speaking people moved out, and now the country's overrun with immigrants. What the hell? Nobody in England speaks English anymore. It's like I'm in a completely different country that I don't even recognise. I hate this. Why did everything have to change? Why couldn't everything have just stayed the way it was? I'm not happy with any of these changes. It makes me uncomfortable. It's not like the world that I used to know. But in Clemtopia, there is none of this crap, and everything is perfect. Clemtopia has everything I've ever wanted, and none of the stuff I hate. If Clemtopia was real, I'd move there right away, and I'd leave my old life behind. I'd never come back. And for the first time in, like, forever actually be happy again. It's been so long since I was happy, I've actually forgotten what being happy feels like. Seriously, I don't know what it's like to be happy anymore. But to sum it up, Clemtopia is a perfect world, or at least my vision of a perfect world. I hate my life in this modern world, I cannot stand it! And I hate not being a kid anymore. I want to be young again, 
I want the world to be like it used to be. I want my perfect life in Clemtopia. Every day is a struggle to just go on.